It's not about proving they exist or showing photos or DNA samples. And it's uh, what they when they show up to us or sometimes on our photos. It's a gift of teachings. It's for our greater understanding. So we honor those gifts. It's not about us. It's to be shared. Welcome, friends. Love you. Perhaps one of the most intriguing subjects on the planet uh, now and in the past has been the subject of the legend of Sasquatch or the Yeti, depending where you are in the world. And too often the story is fraught with fear and violence. And, and today we're going to take a completely different look at the subject with a man named Sunbow, who has gone into direct communication with the Sasquatch. And it's an absolutely beautiful story that I think will really elevate people's way of seeing things. And welcome, Sunbow. I'm so happy to see you here in British Columbia. It was by happen chance, thank God, that we had a chance to meet because I love this story and I've been intrigued with Sasquatch for many years and I find it deeply disturbing that so many um, journalists and alternative journalists even throw Sasquatch under the subject of cryptozoology which is essentially treating Sasquatch as though they're another animal and this is not your experience. The Sasquatch are uh, definitely not animals or mm -hmm. primitive beings. Right. They are very evolved psychically and uh, so they are something else, right? Than what cryptozoologists, for instance, right? Or even uh, anthropologists would. It's say. its own species, which we yeah. have not accommodated for mm -hmm. that notion because we're looking. We've been looking in terms of a very linear type of evolution from one state to another, not yeah. understanding there were many developments of many beings in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is a, a Sasquatch are interdimensional being, so. They can come in a totally physical form or differently. By raising and lowering their density. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It took me over 30 years to, to learn and understand that the Sasquatch are interdimensional beings. Mm -hmm. Tell us what they look like in size and portion, everything. Yeah. Uh, they are, uh, there's different types of Sasquatch. Uh, just because of so many million years of evolution, as well on different planets, has given them a, a range of uh, genetics. Mm -hmm. Well, they are further hairy from head to, to toe. They are taller than us in general, but there are also some that are smaller. Mm -hmm. The Sasquatch have kept in contact with the star people, which uh, more precisely the star elders the Council of Star Elders, because there's all kinds of people in the universe, but there are some elders whose role is to maintain balance and watch over the world. The Native, uh, the native uh, American and Canadian tribes that you've dealt with in particular, did they all have Sasquatch as part of their knowledge base or contact or just certain tribes? Um, was it you, was the understanding of Sasquatch ubiquitous among them or not? Just about every tribe has some Sasquatch stories in their tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not all the same stories. They don't all have the same relation with the Sasquatch. But um, every just about every tribe has a name for them. Mm -hmm. They have in their collective consciousness and their culture. They have the knowledge of those beings. Mm -hmm. And so far, so far, in my research, before I, I met Sasquatch, my best source of information about them came from the native uh, traditions because they had generations of interactions with them to this day. Mm -hmm. At what point did they begin kind of communicating to you about their past and what did they say about themselves? Mm -hmm. It started when, uh, in 2014, when I, I came out west. About three or four years ago, yeah. Yeah. For the first time, I went to where my native ancestors come from, in northern Saskatchewan. Northern Saskatchewan, okay. Your, your own bloodline. Yeah, okay. I, I'm part Cree. 
part Cree Indian. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I heard that story about my great great grandfather when he was about eight. Him and his twin brother were found in the wilderness in the Northwest Territories by some Cree trappers. They were living in a hut of branches, wearing rawhide, uh, eating bugs and mm. roots, and they didn't speak any human language. Your great great grandfather. Yes. Yeah, so when I asked about that story to my cousin, she said, we have Sasquatch in the family. That triggered me to want to know who are those beings, and they're so close from us, yet so di so hidden. Mm -hmm. So I started to do a lot of intensive research, uh, and as I said earlier, most I found most valid information from native sources, because there's a lot of disinformation and uh, speculations and made-up stories that do not describe Sasquatch. Either. Right. As we wrap up this conversation, which I consider to be only an introduction because I want to have you back on a few more times and get much deeper into the knowledge they've, they've imparted to you, we have very, very high capacities beyond, beyond really many, if not most other species. Mm -hmm. We're just not accessing this aspect of self. Do they talk to you about this and give you any instruction even on how we can start doing this integration better? Yeah, uh, the, basically it's to reconnect with all the aspects of our multidimensional being. Mm. We have a mind, but it's just a, an antenna. A consciousness has no place in space. Yeah, this is just a processing yeah, unit. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is beyond physical and linear time. Yeah. So uh, this is what we have to tap into to understand all the different aspects of our being. And of the universe around us. Absolutely. Yes. Bo, again, I want to thank you for taking the time spontaneously here in BC mm -hmm. to spend with me. And just so um, people can get an idea of some of what we're talking about before we even talk again, you have a couple of books that are out right now if you want to just give us the titles and where they can find them. Yeah. Uh, the Sasquatch Message to Humanity. Book one is a conversation with Elder Camus. Mm -hmm. Book two is Interdimensional Teachings from Our Elders. They both can be found on uh, Amazon. Perfect. And I would really like to give special thanks to Kiwani and Kelly for putting up this whole event together for publishing my two books. For all the readers, all the people who show interest and who, who make this book possible, without you, wouldn't be out there. When I heard of Kiwani, I had never heard of his work or found anything about him yet. I said, wow, I said, that. so I'm not so crazy, finally. You know, there's, there's other people who have known of those things and, and shared those teachings around. So it was a great encouragement, and by, I kept writing, and they right away offered to publish the, the first book. So within uh, like a couple months, a few months, I went from thinking no one would relate to having uh, an international family uh, connection, online connection of people who share these experiences and this knowledge and to having a first book published and now a second one and I sure didn't expect that nor to be standing here today. So all of this is from their guidance. What made the big shift in my consciousness about Sasquatch? It's actually them who taught me that they are interdimensional. So then right away, I, I, all the ape hunters and monsters and even primitive uh, Neanderthal theories are gone because they to told us they were uh, brought and planted here by the star people, as we have, but long before us. We are the lineage of a long line of intelligent species. And these species were brought here just like us by our star elders, this, the eldest beings of this universe and, and beyond. 
the, whose purpose is to keep maintain the harmony and the, the spiritual evolution. They explain uh, their origin. They explain their their spiritual mission as caretakers of this earth, as our elders, our elder brothers who are uh, watching over us and teaching us. They also explain that we're not the most intelligent evolved being. We're not the most ancient. And neither are they. So there are a lot of uh, elder races that were here in, on this planet before us. So uh, being, having, sharing 99% of the same genetics, they are our closest related in all of the universe. And that's why they are so close to, to us trying to help us, especially at this time where our collective destiny is taking a dangerous path for all the ecosystems and all life on this planet. So they are here to assist us as an elder would do for their little brothers. These are gifts they give us because uh, once you, you, you know they exist, you don't need proof. But if they give you a track, it means they, they love you. It means they, they, they give you a confirmation like, to help you on your walk. And very often, we can see one track or two or a few, and that's it. So where are they gone? Right there, there's a teaching about interdimensionality. They can leave tracks without having to fully materialize and stay in this plane. And of course, uh, skeptics might not see anything or might debunk systematically everything we try to, to show them about Sasquatch. Uh, so they don't give proof, they give teachings to those who want to learn. All I can say is that walking with the elders is, is a wonderful blessing and experience and they have been giving signs and I, I can talk for myself but I know many other people live these things, have the same experiences. They, they give us signs and, and they manifest in different ways and each time it's a new teaching that brings new understanding. So it's a growth, it's a continuous growth that uh, we always move into higher consciousness when we follow those teachings. Sasquatch is, uh, is part of the collective consciousness already. In Washington state, 36% of the population believe Sasquatch exists. And 12% have had a contact or know firsthand someone who had a contact. So that is a pretty important problem proportion of the population. It's not just a marginal story. It's, it's not only a few guys who made it up. It's been around for thousands of years. So that shows that uh, sightings are much more common uh, than probably we, we hear of, and encounters of all kinds. Sometimes uh, it's a telepathic encounter or um, all kind of signs they leave for us. So that's to help us understand how great is this gathering of people who are understanding these phenomena and many are experiencers here. And there's no better teachers about Sasquatch than the Sasquatch themselves. They will keep coming as they have promised to meet us, but there are still very few humans ready to meet them.